Good evening. Welcome to the regular meeting of the Town Council for Monday, March 14, 2011. I'd ask the Town Clerk to take the roll call. Chair Sherman? Here. Councillor Guvenali? Here. Councillor Jordan? Here. Councillor Lennon? Here. Councillor Sullivan? Here. Councillor Swift Chaotic? Here. And Councillor Walsh? Here. Please rise and join me for the Pledge of Allegiance. Uh, town Council reports and correspondence. Jim. Oh. Oh, you want to do the? Uh, I was just going to give the finance report. Oh, finance. Sure. Which uh, it's not very substantive, given I thought it would be a little bit premature. Um, but I just wanted to review the important dates for folks watching us on television. So bear with me, and just to make note. Um, if you miss any of them, they're all posted on the town website under the meetings calendar, which is on the left hand of the home page. So Tuesday, March 15th, there's a school board budget workshop at 7 o'clock in the Jordan Conference Room. All, in fact, most of them are, unless I make note. Wednesday, March 16th, we have uh, our first municipal budget workshop at 7.30 in the conference room. Next week, Monday, March 21st, again, we have a municipal budget workshop at 7.30. Tuesday the 22nd, uh, school board has their budget workshop, second one in the high school library at 7.30. Thursday, March 24th, school board again, their budget workshop in the high school library. Um, then jumping to April, Monday, April 4th, we have uh, our final budget workshop wrap up if need be. Wednesday the 6th, school board um, does their presentation to us at 7.30 in this conference room and then we both, both boards have a chance to discuss it together. Monday, April 11th is a regular town council meeting when we will set the date for the public hearing. Um, we plan to allocate some time that evening for folks to, uh, to comment on the budget. So if you're interested in the budget and would like to weigh in, Monday, April 11th is a good time to do so. Tuesday, April 12th, school board has their regular monthly meeting. Monday, April 25th is the official public hearing on the budget and our final town council vote. And of course, May 10th, is the citizen vote on the budget validation. Uh, thank you, Sarah. Any other reports or correspondence? Jim. Uh, Fort Williams Advisory Commission. Uh, just a, an update for the council. Uh, the um, commission has been working very, very hard uh, on the issues about uh, revenue in the park. And um, there's a new chairperson, that's Bill Nickerson. And the committee is uh, working through the final sort of revisions of a concession trial for this summer and fall. And that is um, going to be finalized by the commission on Thursday night, because that's the intention on the 16th. And what they're doing is moving towards what they would call a request for proposal. And what they're hoping for is that the council will take this up in the possibility of having a meeting on the 21st, either before our finance committee meeting or after, and consider this request for proposal for concessions as a trial for this coming season. And the reason for that request, and I don't know whether we formalize this later in our agenda, maybe the uh, manager can give us some guidance, is that if we don't get this um, approved by the council, this season may come and go and we will have missed the opportunity. Um, they have worked very, very hard at, on this particular proposal. I don't have a copy for you to see tonight, but once it is uh, recommended by them on Thursday, uh, our hope is that we can get it to you, get it out for public review as well, and with ample notice for a meeting that could be planned and implemented on the 21st. But the long short of it is this is, um, was, it's in the work plan uh, and it is a very important part of what we've been trying to do in the park and that's to generate ideas that are consistent with the vision and the mission of the park but also to generate revenue opportunities 
and to enhance the experience that both citizens and citizens of the greater Portland area, and for that matter, all over the United States get when they, when they come to Fort Williams. There are many other things on the work plan that they've been working through, but I'm, I'm just very pleased that we're, we're getting to the point where we have some things to share with the town council for you to make some decisions about direction. So I put that on the table as a report, but needing some guidance, maybe the manager can help us with that. Uh, Mike, if you want to address that, uh, that would be helpful. I, it would seem to me we would need to get this onto an agenda fairly quickly to, to <clears throat> be able to make hay for this upcoming summer season. If, if the chair or a majority of the council wish to call a meeting, my recommendation would be you do so for the 21st following the Finance Committee meeting. And, and we'll, have, we'll have available on the morning of the 17th online the, the proposal from the Fort Williams Advisory Commission so that everyone will have a chance to see it. So would that be the timing that would work, would we expect? Yeah, it, otherwise, you, you know, your April meeting is not until the second Monday. I don't know what date it is, but we've got to get the proposals out so people can start planning what they're going to be right. selling and doing. Okay. Our, how do council members feel about doing that special 21st. meeting on the 21st? Yep. Okay, it seems like we have consensus, so we could uh, call a special meeting for the 21st following our finance committee meeting. We'll prepare an agenda. Okay, great. Thank you, Jim. Anything you. else on the? No, but just to, they're working very hard, and it's uh, it's it's refreshing to to see the direction they're headed in, um, and I think they they have, uh, um, you know, they believe me. A lot of hours have gone into this, both at meetings and in small subgroups of uh, doing the research and getting you know the necessary best in class to present to the town council. Any other reports? Oh, Frank. Um, I just wanted to give a little bit of an update on the Alternative Energy Committee. Um, I was going to give you a fuller update because uh, there was a meeting, it was supposed to be a meeting last week, but it was canceled because it, people had conflicts. But I, I did want to highlight the fact that they've got um, in the work plan, which they submitted, a uh, really exciting, really exciting um, and full agenda for the year as it relates to uh, projects they're undertaking. Um, in the first meeting in February, which was the only <laughs> meeting they had, uh, which I did not attend, but um, they are addressing the boiler replacement. They are replaced, uh, they're addressing the high efficiency street lights, uh, solar thermal project, and at the next meeting on April 7th, uh, they'll be looking at uh, biomass boilers and having an exciting road trip to Oxford to see a biomass boiler this week, which I may or may not be able to attend, I'm not sure yet. Um, also on the 7th, uh, they'll be looking at um, natural gas possibilities piping to Cape Elizabeth Town Center, which we talked about last year. I'm not exactly sure what the status is on that is, but probably get an update uh, from that meeting. So, but um, they are a very active group, and I think they're doing really good work. Hey, thank you. Okay. Anyone else? I just uh, on the uh, topic of the boiler, I did receive a very nice note from the interim superintendent Ken Murphy, uh, thanking the council for uh, um, helping to finance that. So uh, again, that was much appreciated by the superintendent as well as the school board. Uh, I also uh, had the pleasure of going to the uh, swimming pool, the high school pool, a few Sundays ago for an open swim and experienced firsthand the slide. <laughs> it's not just a slide, it's actually a, basically an obstacle course. Uh, it's, uh, Caitlin Jordan can attest, and I, I'm glad to say I made it through. Uh, uh, but what was great to see was how, how many people were there enjoying the open swim. It seems to me that that's having the intended consequence, which is to uh, generate more attendance. And I also finally did attend a school board meeting uh, last week. Uh, I was there actually speaking on behalf of uh, project graduation, but what was uh, the nicest thing for me to see were all the high school athletes reporting on their seasons. Uh, and uh, we had some very successful teams, and we've all read about, for example, the high school boys basketball team, but we also had teams that weren't quite as successful, but it just seemed to me uh, that the students were so enthusiastic about competing, that that's really what it's all about. So anyway, it was, uh, I, I, I no, noted to the school board that they get sports updates in their meetings, and we, we don't tend to get that. So I thought I would uh, add that tonight. Um, uh, this is our first opportunity for citizens to discuss items that are not on the agenda. If anybody's here to speak, please come forward. Uh, with not seeing anyone, we can move on to the town manager's report. Uh, yes, uh, 
Thank you, David. I just, uh, before I speak, I want to defer to Deborah to give an update on some of our online activities. Great. Thank you very much. Um, one of the Council's goes, goals under continuing initiatives is to implement more availability of online transactions. I just want to highlight three briefly. Um, from October 15th through January 31st each year, uh, residents can go online to register their dogs. We register almost 1,200 in Cape Elizabeth, which actually is really amazing for a community of our size. 330 residents uh, registered their dogs online this year, which I thought was pretty amazing, about 27%. So that program is working very well. Um, excise tax, I took a quick look um, of the last three years, um, full fiscal years, uh, 2008, 9, and 10. And on the average, um, we register 723 vehicles a month. Out of that, an average of 105 vehicles are registered online, so about 16% on that. Each year, it's uh, slightly risen, and I, and I anticipate that as we go along, more and more folks will take advantage. And that's for re-registrations. Um, the ability to do new registrations is not available. Um, a new offering that we have is paying your property taxes online. You may have seen with the tax bills that went out on February 18th, um, we announced the new service. And residents can go online, pay their property taxes, or they can schedule a payment. Uh, they can pay by electronic check, debit card, or credit card. And there are service fees for that. Um, this program has generated a lot of questions from residents. My number and email is about on every page of it, which is fine. Really great questions from residents. Um, they have really um, uh, enjoyed the opportunity to register online. I just had a woman call today. She's in California. And I noticed tonight when I came in, I checked. She paid online today because she couldn't get home to do that. So we have a lot of folks like that. The ability to uh, register in advance. Again, some people say, oh, I might forget or I might be called away for work or what have you, so they're able to actually schedule a payment. Um, just today, in fact, we had seven new people registered, so we have 31 um, folks that have registered online. We have uh, 10 scheduled payment at payments of over $37,000. We have some accounts that have already paid over $20,000, and out of those 31 that have registered, 10 have elected so far to go paperless, that they can receive their tax bill next go around um, via email. I certainly uh, see these numbers increasing. We've only been online for three weeks, but we just wanted to uh, remind folks that that offering is available. Taxes are due April 5th. Uh, and again, being a, a council goal, we thought it was a good opportunity to update you folks, and uh, we look forward to uh, seeing the numbers gain um, on these offerings. So. Thanks, Deborah. Do you have a mask question? Sure. Um, uh, we're charging fees for all online transactions, not just credit cards? That's correct. There's, it's 40 cents to do um, a payment by electronic check, $3.95 a flat fee for debit cards, and $2.95 cents uh, per transaction for credit cards. Those are service fees that go right to the company that we've partnered with, Invoice Cloud. It's not a service fee that the town uh, receives, um, but it's very clear when folks go to enter their information that there's a, um, a payment for your taxes and the service fee and then the total. So. Thank you. Thanks, Deborah. Great. Thank you. Mike? Yeah, uh, thanks, David. I, and thank you, Deborah, uh, for the uh, good report. Um, I know Deborah put an awful lot of time in particularly the, the relationship with Invoice Cloud and all the data systems our computer service provided to set that up, and much appreciated. I did want to make mention that the school department lost uh, one of their custodians, passed away uh, a week or so ago, Alan Westbury. Alan worked for the school department five to six years. But in addition to that, he also was a police officer for the town for 31 years uh, and uh, was a good, dedicated employee and longtime resident of Cape Elizabeth and uh, certainly will be missed and uh, appreciate all that he did for the town through the 36 years uh, that, he, that he served the town in various positions. Um, wanted to make mention the annual reports for 2009 and 10 are both available, uh, one late, one on time. Uh, if anyone would like a copy, they are available here at the town office. Uh, if the council haven't seen them yet, they're up in their boxes up front. Uh, third, third, I wanted to mention, once a year we get a check from Time Warner Cable 
uh, for the franchise fee, everyone, when they get the cable bill, there's a little 5% that is, is at the bottom of the bill uh, that, that goes to the town of Cape Elizabeth, and it, I think it says franchise fee on it. Uh, the check today it came in, it was for a little over $154,000. So, it, you know, it, one, it shows that those amounts uh, add up. Uh, secondly, we, we had budgeted in, in next year's budget 125000 Figuring last year we got 144,000. We thought the economy, maybe people aren't getting as many premium channels, maybe uh, you know people going to satellite television, all these things. Well, t you know, Time Warner apparently is holding their business. Uh, as I said, last year it was 144,000. This year it's 154,000. Yes, some cable rates have increased, uh, but overall it's good. They have, interestingly enough, 3,200 customers here in Cape Elizabeth. Uh, that do receive service in Time Warner Cable. Our franchise fee is based on the basic service, the pay service, the installation fees, the equipment charges, and even more if people buy things on the home shopping networks, we get a percentage of the cut of, this was something we had negotiated, of what uh, the sales are in Cape Elizabeth. We also, last time negotiated, we get a cut of the advertising. Uh, so when you see those, those ads you don't like that sometimes interrupt the programming, uh, on the various cable channels, uh, we do actually get a cut out of that. 5% uh, of the revenues that Time Warner gets proportion to Cape Elizabeth. So anyway, it's, it's 154,000. The, the good news is 125,000 was, was in the budget as a revenue for next year. And you know what I think with pulling out of the economy, that's probably an amount that might be able to be bumped up a little when we meet as the Finance Committee. So that was good news. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Mike. Uh, we turn to the minutes from our February 14, 2011 meeting. Is there a motion? Ann? Move to accept. Second. Second. Motion has been made and seconded. Any discussion? All those in favor? Oh, Jessica. It's just a tiny typo on page six. Um, uh, the first paragraph, there shall be 72 hour weekly close season and no fish shall be taken, I'm sure is what is intended there. <clears throat> oh, it's tiny. Oh, That's sure. That's all. Yep. Did you see that, Deborah? I'll accept, I'll accept, I'll accept that as a friendly so. amendment. Okay. <laughs> okay. So the motion is made and seconded with that amendment. Uh, any further discussion? All those in favor? Thank you. Um, okay, Mike is dimming the lights. Turn to item number 57-2011, the fiscal year 2012 budget. And Mike, you have a PowerPoint. Very brief. All right. Try to keep brief. Thank you. Thank you, Dave. As Sarah Lennon mentioned a few uh, minutes ago, the town council is beginning its process of reviewing the, the municipal budget. Uh, is it Wednesday night, Sarah? Yep. On Wednesday night and uh, beyond there. Thought I'd give a brief overview and introduction of the budget and where it stands. Uh, Overall, the budget's up a little bit more than $350,000. That's 4.2% increase, a little bit more than we're used to. And it's interesting, as you look at the school budget, it's, it's a full 2% more than the school budget, something uh, that uh, is of interest and uh, is not typical of what we've seen probably in the last 10 to 20 years. Uh, the, the reason the municipal budget is up, if, if you look at the heading on this, it, it's, in my view, trying to take care of assets. I've also referred to it as stewardship for you know, what the, the taxpayers are responsible in the town, what the town's responsible for. 75% uh, of the increase could be attributable simply to added maintenance for the port, uh, for a lot of our buildings, and for uh, about 100000 more additional that's proposed to be spent in replacement of equipment and road work and the other things that's in the capital improvement section of the budget. Uh, part, one of our key assets is our employees. The, uh, the budget provides for a 2% increase. When you add all the different benefits in, the, you know, the effect of Social Security, of retirement contributions, all together it adds up to $91,000. If you look at the, the 357000 increase in spending, just those two things alone would, would equate, if they were the only things going up and down in the budget, to 100% of the increase. Uh, you know, what are some of the different things that are being done? In the, the Fort Williams, the sort of the plan that was developed uh, for this past year of, of after the, the citizen vote on fees, 
there was, there was a sense of, and there was a lot of talk that the town needs to do more to take care of the park. Uh, one of the reasons for having the proposed fees was recognizing there were needs for the park that needed to be addressed. Uh, this, the money specifically, uh, there's an extra $83,000 in the park uh, budget proposed for this coming year. is specifically to go to the stone walls, uh, one section along Shore Road, as well as particularly up around uh, the, the, the old tennis court and the old basketball court that's more or less fallen apart across from the Parks Maintenance Building. Uh, there's an effort to repave some roads. Most of them will be in Shore Acres. Uh, there's monies proposed. Uh, we try to do a drainage project every couple of years. There's uh, proposed to do one on Oakhurst Road. We've had some continuing issues. I know the council's got some emails on it over the years. And then there's some, uh, if you look at Starboard Drive, which is down off at the intersection of Scott Dyer and Spurwing, uh, right near the intersection, uh, that was built in the, the mid-70s and didn't have a proper base and fallen apart. And this is the beginning of some civil engineering to figure out what to do about the drainage so that we don't get a road where the water is pumping up through it uh, and causing it to break up all the time. Uh, some of the, the other things, uh, it's, you know, people wonder how many police cruisers do you replace in a year. There's one proposed in this budget. Uh, is, we have a night, one of our oldest pieces of equipment, a 1970 road grader. It's the one that keeps Route 77 ice and scrapes it, you know, right to the, the surface. Uh, we're proposing to replace that with a used piece of equipment that we expect to pay about $140,000 for. A used grader, you know, could be up over $300,000. Uh, excuse me, a new one. The used one's proposed uh, uh, for $140,000. Uh, the fire responders, when they go into their fire calls, have to have self-contained breathing apparatus that actually fit, uh, you know, the face mask. Those, those uh, it's $85,000 for 18 of them. Uh, they're not cheap, they need to be fitted, they need to be on the right trucks, uh, and it's proposed to replace 18 of them. The Tossmer Library is going to be, I think, one of your challenging issues in this budget. Uh, there's, there's a bunch of proposals that came from the facilities director to invest actually about $133,000 just in maintenance of the building, everything from boilers to energy improvements to replacing boarding that's going. And I cut that back to 100,000 with the things still to be chosen. But what, what I really would recommend is that we work to cut that back to 50 just to keep the building going uh, with the plan that uh, we're gonna be doing something major with the library in, in a few years. But even then there's things that need to be done and should be done just to keep it running for the period of time you know, it's probably at least two to three years off before we, we do something. But that's, I, you know, I look forward to that discussion. That should be a really interesting discussion when you get to that as, as uh, how much resources you want to put into the library and what direction you wish to apply them to. You know, another uh, building that hasn't got any, uh, much of anything done on it the last few years is the Cape Cottage Fire Station. Uh, it's leaking all the time in, onto the equipment, the roof. Uh, it'd be 24000 to fix that. We don't, the staff does not see in the short term any savings from going to South Portland and Willard and, and forcing the issue to build a whole new station there. We see this as, as more economical and again, something we look forward to discussing with you and, and uh, with the community. Uh, there are some savings uh, in the budget. One is we're eliminating uh, in, in, in the front tax office a position that was half time. We're also taking, there were two clerical positions upstairs in the Assistant Codes Planning Office. One of those two positions is going to have to spend one-third of their time down in the tax office to help with different projects. But overall, you know, folks say, what are you doing as a result of, you know, the online things that, that uh, Deborah just mentioned, as well as lesser business. And this is, this is addressing the fact that things aren't as busy, although we, we still remain very nervous during peak times of not having enough uh, assistance, and particularly when people are on vacation, someone's out sick. Uh, you know, we, we collect, you know, over thirty million dollars a year to the counter, and when you're collecting those amounts of money, you want to be giving good service. Uh, you don't want people to come and find out that they can't be helped because there's no one there. Uh, we're also continuing to save in debt expense. Uh, over the last two years, from recycling, it's it's the the, e the fees we pay to Equal Maine have gone down about hundred thousand dollars. It was uh, almost seventy thousand last year and twenty three thousand this year and that's as a result primarily of citizens using the silver bullets uh, to uh, to recycle the, 
the actual savings the domain fees in the budgets about twenty three five we withdrew from the main street retirement system back about fifteen twenty years ago but we still have fifty five retired employees who are on the plan forty eight municipal seven school this included custodians include people that worked for public works years and years ago the library here at the town hall and because of the decline in the stock market a couple years ago we are like many other communities they're asking us now to contribute to that plan and originally asked for ninety nine thousand we went back and forth with them and this was the amount after they had their actuary look at it again what they told me is that supposed to be funded over fourteen years the unfunded actuary liability although the the actual unfunded actuary liability is seven times that amount so I I still don't get it ought to be you know at that but regardless I don't think it really hurts us to to be to be paying that system and ensuring that it's fully funded of course you know the last week hasn't been too good stock market generally has has improved since July of 2010 when the last numbers are based upon unemployment this is one number that doesn't follow the same track the total is twenty five thousand the increase in this year's budget is fifty one percent from what it was last year or eighty over eighty five hundred dollars that primarily as a result still of the dispatch consolidation we we ran into some expenses you might expect with unemployment compensation particularly for one individual and also getting hit indirectly and I've got the person that handles our unemployment insurance at Maine Municipal looking into it of as a result of the continuations and help in unemployment insurance there were for whatever reason we're getting hit with those and I thought stimulus monies were paying for them but we're checking that out we had also as a result of good worker safety records we're saving about nine thousand in workers comp overall in this budget the municipal tax rates up five cents that's fifteen dollars to someone who owns a three hundred thousand dollar home if you look at it from fiscal year two thousand nine which is began July one two thousand eight when the recession began and you know I think the answer is what have you done in you know and what's happened with taxes in response to the recession and the other activities the municipal it's up a penny from what it was in 09 to what it's proposed in fiscal year 12 that means that the $300,000 homeowner in 2009 would have paid twelve hundred and fifteen dollars for all their municipal services now it's it's twelve thousand excuse me twelve hundred eighteen dollars so I wanted to really spell that out so the three dollars wasn't confused with a tax rate increase or something like that we're actually talking three three dollars two cups of coffee is Oh, actually, coffee's gone down in prices. Good sales around town. Uh, maybe three cups of coffee uh, is is what the increase uh, has been in uh, the property tax, or would be under this proposed budget. Uh, yeah, personnel is is half the budget now. Sometimes that's been up as high as fifty-five percent. I don't think it's ever down to fifty. My goal is to try to keep it between fifty and fifty-two, because what I find is if we put too much into personnel then we're getting into a problem like we got into we weren't really taking care of our other assets uh, and there needs to be a balance between between that and everything else that we do as you can see uh, debt service is 11 percent of the budget continues to decline a little bit there's a lot of attention on you know because of the cost of fuel we budgeted everything at three dollars a gallon uh, for this coming year who knows uh, the, the uh, crude oil futures are all over the place it, the increase in the budget for utilities, fuel, and heat is 40, about forty-five thousand dollars this year, or about six percent from uh, the uh, five hundred thousand or so that it was uh, in the current budget. Uh, the monies, what the real killer here for local taxpayers is, you, you look property tax is sixty-two percent, excise tax is eighteen. To fund the municipal budget, fully eighty percent of it comes from taxation that that you know you really have to pay uh, you don't have much choice uh, the state contributes about eight percent you know as you, you saw earlier in different reports that was about 15 or 16 percent back a few years ago uh, the amount proposed to come from surplus is up a little bit as a result of uh, you know, good results last year you know the, the whole discussion this past year with uh, you know no one wanted to see Fort Williams fees or at least whatever the, the vote was uh, a great majority didn't want to see Fort Williams fees nor did they want to see pay per bag and as a result only three percent of the budgets funded with user fees you know 
the, the pie, yes, some expenses can go up or down depending on the needs and, and whatever, but it, you look at it, it's, we're really paying a disproportionately high expense through taxes, mandatory taxes, and not through user fees that people can control. And, you know, and, and I hear all this talk, although I don't watch a certain cable stations, but all this talk about liberty. You know, liberty is the ability to choose, and sometimes when given the ability to choose, it's not what actually happens. So I think that's just a very interesting chat, and I'll avoid political comments. Uh, as you can see, this is, the, this is what we call the pro forma. This is all the budgets put together. Uh, the town spending is proposed to go up 4.2%. School spending under the superintendent's budget, I don't know what the school board has done with it so far, but I would guess it would be pretty close to that 2.2% that Superintendent Murphy recommended. Uh, you know, overall spending, if you look at all the different budgets, the county and community service and everything else, is proposed to go up 2.7. The cost of living is currently 1.6. Uh, there's a new CPIU coming out March 17th. We'll see what that says. Uh, revenue, uh, the town revenues are up because of surplus amounts. School revenues are down primarily because the stimulus monies are gone. Community services is flat. I hope they're not too optimistic there. And overall revenues are down about 1%. The amount that we would collect from taxes, uh, if you add it all together, is 3.7% th more. But there's, there's additional valuation. Uh, and because of the additional valuation, it actually Instead of the tax rate going up 3.7% as a result of all these different budgets, it's 2.4%. Uh, and that's as the budget says they've been proposed to the, the elected bodies. The county assessment is already set, uh, and that is up 4.7%. The county budget itself wasn't up that much, but because of this year, with the county, our valuation uh, went up a little bit while other places went down. We ended up paying more of the county budget this year, but we've gotten, you can see, uh, we're still paying less than we were uh, uh, two years ago. We were paying 967,000 versus 992 today. The, the one thing I want to talk about, because there's been so much attention with, with Wisconsin and other places, is you know what what do we do for retirement for our employees, and how do we differ from all the different issues you read nationally to do with retirement? Uh, a defined benefit retirement plan is a typical retirement plan like Main State Retirement or the ones you read of, of all these different places. Our only employees who have a defined benefit plan, you know, they work so many years and they get a pension of a set amount. Our only, the only employees that, we, that have that are police officers. There are a couple of individuals who were in the old retirement plan 15 years ago who are allowed to stay in that, who are still in it. Uh, but no one has been able to get into that retirement plan for more than 15 years. All other employees have what we call a defined contribution plan. The town contributes 7%, they match 7%. Uh, you know, compared to the private sector, that is probably a little bit more generous. They, they don't do a one-on-one -on -one match, but it is typically what, what is done, particularly for public service employees here in Maine. We also participate in Social Security. The town contributes 7.65% uh, to Social Security and Medicare as mandated by law. The employees usually contribute that amount because of a special thing in the tax uh, bill that passed the Congress last December is actually a little bit less than, than this year. Uh, we don't have, we hear about retiree health benefits and the future costs. We don't have any retiree health benefits. When you, when you leave employment for the town of Cape Elizabeth, you, you pick up your own health insurance cost. So, you know, overall, you know, we, don't, we don't have this huge vulnerability that, that uh, other entities have with retirement. We, we have the police are part of an overall statewide consolidated plan. It's fully funded. Uh, you know, unlike the state system, the state system, the big problem is, is that <coughs> the state was supposed to be funding it and wasn't. Uh, there was, uh, the employees were kicking in 7.65%. The state was only kicking in 2.65. Uh, and, you know, as a result, that's grossly underfunded and as a result of the investment declines. The police officer thing, Consolidated plans not like that because the communities have been funding it. Uh, so anyway, that's the where we stand with retirement. It's uh, yeah, we do have a little bit of an unfunded liability for what we got out of 15 years ago, but still, it's you know we we know the potential uh, isn't that great there because of actuarially, there's uh, I'm trying to put this politely, there's a lot of people retired a lot more years a lot of years ago 
and they aren't going to be collecting a whole lot in the future, particularly because it was based in it originally on their earnings from way back. Any questions at all? Good. I look forward to, again, discussing this with you on Wednesday. And a lot of this is all on PowerPoint presentation, but uh, the whole budget, the budget message, all that's online. Thank you. I'll see you We're going to be getting some feedback. Thanks, Mike. Oh, okay. All right, item 58-2011, uh, work plans. Uh, we have received work plans from the Alternative Energy Committee, the Arts Commission, the Conservation Commission, uh, the Fort Williams Advisory Commission, the Ordinance Committee, the Planning Board, the Recycling Committee, and the trustees of the Thomas Memorial Library. And actually, I want to correct myself we get one from Fort Williams Advisory Commission? We did not yet. Uh, Mike, is that on its way to us? I tried to email it to you. Did you get it, Kate? Yeah, it's in our mailbox. Okay. <laughs> All right. I tried the other day. All right. Um, I don't know if we need to do much beyond just indicating that we've received them, but go ahead, Frank. We haven't got one from the Cemetery uh, Commission. Um, we'll be meeting, we'll meeting next week. Are there any other uh, bodies out there that we need? There's the zoning board, but I talked to Mike about it. I, I will um, contact the code enforcement officer since they just respond appeal. Their work plan is just to respond to appeals. <laughs> they don't have a work plan other than that. Right. So. Okay. But I'll I'll email the code enforcement officer so we can get something that sure. says that. All right. Is there, are there any others that we need to think about? Uh, anybody want to discuss any of these or have any questions? Anne. I just have one comment that I um, was very impressed by the amount of work. When you see it all laid out, all the work that all these volunteers do for the community, it's really quite impressive. And so I think we're really lucky to have all these folks who are uh, doing all this work for our, for us, for our fellow citizens, so. Yeah, and I want to echo that comment. I was very impressed with these work plans, uh, and there's a lot of uh, that vision thing that one of our former presidents used to talk about <laughs> in these work plans, people really taking the long-term view of what is best for our town. So uh, I, for one, really appreciate that. Um, okay. Item 59-2011, the Planning Board Ordinance Committee Coordination. Uh, Jim, since you're the chair of the Ordinance Committee and our liaison to the Planning Board, could you uh, explain to the council what this is about? Okay, first, uh, first off, I you know, want to recognize that we have Elaine Philander, who's the Planning Board Chair here tonight as well. And um, Elaine is also... Um, and I welcome you to the podium if you wish you want to add anything to what we're going to present here uh, this evening, if, if you will. Um, Elaine and um, Maureen and uh, Michael and myself, we met uh, in February uh, to really talk about the, the liaison position and the relative uh, communications between the two boards, uh, the ordinance committee being, you know, a subset of the town council. And um, in that in that meeting, we talked about this sort of as is, what we currently do. And what you have in front of you is a model that describes across the top the way the current uh, communication between citizens or groups to town council, then to the planning, uh, planning board, and back to us, and then ultimately to decisions that the town council will have after a public hearing. And um, in the conversation between Elaine, Maureen, Michael, and myself, we determined that, that in the interest of um, recognizing the quality of the communication, that we might want to take a little different approach to this in this next year, if you will, especially in light of some of the 
sort of larger questions that are on the table relative to the, to the comprehensive plan. And the fact that we, we pressed the pause button last year on continuing to execute or to, um, to implement the, the comprehensive plan. And there wasn't quite the level of discussion, if you will, between the two boards about why and how and what are our expectations and, 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 and really what are we ultimately trying to accomplish here by citizen involvement, either by appointment or by those elected officials that sit here today. So what you see across the bottom is that at the, at the first level, when the town council refers something to the planning board, um, it, um, the town council has discussed the amendment idea, but then at the first planning board discussion, which might be a workshop, the suggestion was made by this group that a town councilor who is the, is the, the contact between the two boards might attend that meeting and to simply explain some of the background or the wisdom as to why it's being referred to them. Um, again, the effort isn't to really um, to, uh, to, to have us um, sort of define the agenda or the process. It's more around just explain why are we giving them the discussion about roosters, okay, is a good example. You know, why are we doing that? And, and again, um, then the planning board would then go into its process in dealing with the question and then coming back to us and making a recommendation. Now, um, at that point, the planning board chair would then, or his or her designee, would then present back to the council what their recommendation is and again impart some of the, the wisdom as to why they have decided on what they're recommending for us. And finally, the Ordinance Committee, we, which is an ongoing monthly meeting, uh, and as, uh, you know, between Anne Frank and myself, with Maureen's help as the staff person, we asked or in this discussion that if we had more understanding of where we're both going as, an, as institutions within the town, uh, that, that they would send a person who would just attend our meetings as a citizen, certainly involve themselves at whatever level they wish to in that meeting because we do allow citizen input. But to physically be there um, and, again, continuing the dialogue and making sure that there's better understanding of both what the planning board is about to do or not do or recommend and also what we as the ordinance committee um, finally recommend to you, the town council, to vote on. So it's really more... Um, trying to articulate a better um, conversation between an appointed board and this elected board. And um, again, it's a little bit of a departure from what we have currently been doing. Not to say that what we have is broken, but we certainly, I know Elaine is very, very intent on, on making sure that the time and the talent and the energy that's put into planning board activity is purposeful and focused and that they are acting on behalf of citizens and also on behalf of themselves uh, in, in the best interest of the town of Cape Elizabeth. So this is something to trial. Um, <clears throat> I think um, when we had the conversation, um, Michael indicated, why not give it a shot? Let's, let's see how we can do this. What you have there is that you have a memo that articulates what took place at our meeting. I had Maureen do this model because of my thought it might be just a little easier to understand if it was modeled for you um, to have an as is and then the new enhanced program. So again, um, uh, what I really need, I believe, at this point, Michael, of direct, uh, direction is do I need a, um, to me to make a motion that we accept this concept or how do we? That'd be fine. Okay. Um, and then, David, uh, in terms of Elaine wanting to jump in and add her points of view, is it now the time, or should I make a motion and then open it up, or how do, how do, how do we want to work this? Uh, why don't we put a motion on the table, but then we'll have discussion and allow Elaine to offer some input at that point. Okay. Um, uh, then I guess I would like to move that we... Um, we um, implement an ordinance, the ordinance amendment process as, um, as outlined in the memo dated February 28th, 2011. Um, 
to enhance town council and planning board communications for the fiscal year that we're in today or in this year effective immediately I second it okay motion's been made and seconded uh elaine did did you want have anything that you'd like to add uh okay would you mind coming to the podium then so we can <clears throat> public can hear you as well As Jim said, I'm Elaine Fallander. I live at 16 Mayor's Hollow Lane, and I'm here as the chair of the planning board. Um, I think Jim described pretty well what we're doing. I just wanted to amplify a couple of points. First of all, I think um, many of the issues that come to us come to us after there's been discussion at the town council that the planning board hasn't heard. So we don't have the political context, if, if you will, or the the background for the information, for the proposals that come. We have an amendment that we're asked to consider and often we feel that we're doing it in sort of a vacuum. And as, as a planning board, we tend to focus on what makes the most sense from a planning perspective. What's the, the best, what are the land use alternatives here and, and what is going to help the town in terms of enforcing its ordinances and the growth desires or growth limitations as we see them in the comprehensive plan. But I know that sometimes when things then come back to the town council, there are other perspectives that are in addition to the purely planning perspectives. So we thought that it would be very helpful if someone from the town council would come and just give us some context when we first get something proposed. The other thing that, that we have found um, in our process, particularly for issues that are more complex or more controversial, we have many opportunities for public participation. And then a matter will come back to the town council, and there are many more opportunities for public participation. And our perception is that many members of the public get burnt out because they come to our very initial meetings and we don't see those individuals again. And the, the individuals most directly affected tend to continue to come to all of the various meetings. But the, the input that we got from the first individuals who came often gets lost by the time something comes to the town council. So it seemed to us that if once we've gone through our process, if we then can bring some of our process to the town council, some of that citizen input, I think, will more effectively follow through. And then citizens, again, obviously have, a, have an opportunity to come and talk to the town council, but I think it will help with, with the follow through a little bit. Um, and I also think that there's, there is some duplication that occurs between the consideration that takes place at the planning board and the consideration that occurs at the ordinance committee and then the second the separate sets of public hearings that occur at the town council, and that's appropriate. It should be that way because the town council considers factors that really are separate from the factors that the planning board considers. But I think if there were an official planning board representative to those ordinance committee meetings, it would help the ordinance committee to understand some of the planning factors we've considered, some of the citizen input that we've had at our public hearings, and again, helped put everything in context. So that's what's behind this. Um, and I really think it would be helpful to, to everyone make our process more efficient and make everyone know that in whatever forum input is received, that when the final decision is made by the town council, that information is still on the table. So I think those are the, the main issues behind our proposal. Okay. Thank you. Does anybody have any questions or comments? It Great. seems to, thank seems you. thank you. It seems to me a very well thought out proposal, uh, and sometimes that's happened on an ad hoc basis. Uh, I know in the past couple of years, Peter Hadem has come when we've had a difficult time with a particular issue, and that's been yeah. much appreciated. So this looks uh, to me like a very well thought out approach. Uh, any further questions or discussion? Jessica. I have a question um, on section four. The last 
sentence confused me. Um, <clears throat> The Planning Board Liaison Committee who, uh, I'm sorry, the Planning Board Liaison will not vote but will be a resource to the Ordinance Committee to explain the Planning Board's thinking on ordinance amendment recommendations and as to items that have not yet been referred to the Planning Board to help facilitate subsequent referrals. <clears throat> and I was trying to clarify that to myself and my question is, <clears throat> How can the planning board liaison represent the planning board's decision, uh, planning board's thinking on an item <clears throat> that the planning board hasn't seen yet? I mean, that's how I read that sentence. So I I'm just probably need some clarification, but I couldn't figure it out. <laughs> Elaine, could you address that? <laughs> sentence um, that what I understand to be somewhat unusual circumstance that exists right now in the Ordinance Committee where the Ordinance Committee is considering potential amendments to the definition of growth areas mm -hmm. that ultimately will come to the Planning Board. In the usual procedure that would have come to the Planning Board first. The Planning Board would make a recommendation and it would then go back to the Town Council and the Ordinance Committee. In the current circumstance, it's actually going to the Ordinance Committee first. But we thought that because ultimately it will come to the Planning Board, in this particular case, the Planning Board liaison would go to the Ordinance Committee at this stage because it's an issue that, in order to, to be turned into an Ordinance Amendment, would have to come to the Planning Board. So the liaison at that point would almost be working in reverse, taking back to the Planning Board the input from the Ordinance Committee, but also at the Ordinance Committee giving a planning perspective to the members of the Ordinance Committee as they contemplate what I, as I gather in this case would be a recommendation from the Ordinance Committee to the Town Council, and the Town Council might then be, give a specific statutory amendment language already done to the Planning Board for their review. So that's what that last sentence is intended to cover perhaps not completely artfully. <laughs> Thank but you, you did a very good job of explaining it, though. <laughs> <laughs> You're very right. That's exactly what's going to happen from the Ordinance Committee. They're going to come back to the Council with a recommendation, which then would then be, be referred to you. And again, this is really all an attempt to, to kind of close whatever communication there may or may not be by adding the liaison in both cases and the willingness on the part of the Planning Board to participate this way and my hat's off to the willingness to do it. I think it's great. More communication, the better, we'll, better results we're going to finally get. Oh, yeah. No, I think it's great. Um, and I would presume then with all this back and forth of liaisons attending meetings that the, the, the comments will be recorded in minutes um, of all these meetings as per usual so that everyone knows what's being said and considered. We don't have minutes of our workshop meetings. I don't know about the Ordinance Committee meetings. I no, don't no believe we have minutes oh, okay. of Ordinance Committee meetings either. I mean, the public is welcome to attend any of them, but maybe that's uh, food for thought for future discussion points. I don't know. Uh, I don't know if we need to get into that tonight, but uh, uh, well, that hasn't been the case. Mm -hmm. Yes, Ann? I think it's sort of related, but I think it's, it would be important for whichever planning board members going back and forth and whichever um, councillor members going back and forth is that sometimes there is not consensus, at least on the council. I don't know how the planning board operates, but I suspect <coughs> it might be the same. Um, sometimes there's not consensus. So just when um, a councillor attends the planning board meeting to sort of relay the council's thoughts, they just make sure that, you know, if there's a broad spectrum of views on the council, that it, the fact that there's a broad spectrum of views um, is relayed. I think sometimes pe members of the public think that the council speaks as one on a particular issue, and so, so I, I doubt that the uh, planning board members um, think that, but sometimes members of the public think the planning board says or the council says if they hear one councillor say that. So, But I think whoever is going to be doing the communicating back and forth will be careful to note that. Mm -hmm. so. mm -hmm. 
Just to, Jim. To, to answer that, and um, that, I mean, the Fort, Fort Williams Advisory Commission is a good example. I, if I have to say it once, I say it ten times. I'm one counselor. There are seven of us, okay? And it's real important to keep that context. And, and I think your, your words, your caution is, is absolutely right. Um, we have to make sure that people understand that, that there are different points of view here. And, and until we have the final matter in front of us in whatever form it takes, you know, you, you, we, we have to make sure that people understand just one counselor not representing the group. Right. And sometimes it's not even any counselor. Sometimes if the idea has come from a citizen, and I'm not picking on the rooster issue, but I don't think it was anybody on the council that brought up the rooster issue, for instance. So sometimes it's just a member of the public has requested an ordinance change. Mm -hmm. And it's just, I'm not speaking so much to Elaine, but to the people who might be watching on TV to realize that um, anybody can bring forth an idea for an ordinance change. And so sometimes the council, any particular councilor may not have any particular opinion on it because it didn't come from them or from anyone on this board. So that's just important to note. Any other comments? Jessica? Yep, just one more. Uh, as this is um, being proposed as a pilot program for one year, um, I wonder if I could, could recommend that in 12 months that we have maybe from you, Jim and Elaine, you know, just a report, a summary of, did this work? Was it effective? Did, you know, did the planning board and the ordinance um, committee, you know, enjoy this new process and just something that the council can have as a summary? Well, I think that makes sense. Frank. It, it does, I mean, what you're really attempting to achieve here is, is using everyone's time more effectively and communicate more effectively amongst the groups. And so much of that is gonna depend upon how effective communicator is the lady <coughs> so whether it's a planning board person or not to some degree it seems that this role of communicating being a channel has been performed by Maureen um, and so I guess she's always <coughs> there to facilitate that process but it's an important role if you hope this thing is going to work it doesn't seem to me that the structure so much is going to define success or failure it's going to be the individuals any other comments yeah, we have a motion that's been seconded, I believe. Okay, all those in favor of the motion. Okay, carries unanimously. Thank you very much for coming tonight. Um, I've just been reminded that uh, we need to return to the first item on our agenda, uh, number 57, uh, because we do need to refer the proposed budget to the Finance Committee for review. So do I have a motion? So moved. Okay, Second. thank you, Frank. Motion's been made and seconded. Discussion? All those in favor? All right, thank you. Um, we now come to our second opportunity for citizens to discuss items not on the agenda. Uh, not seeing anybody coming forward. Um, let's see. Before we go into uh, item number 60, I just do want to remind folks that we, the Finance Committee, which is the Town Council, uh, will be meeting uh, this Wednesday, March 16th, to begin the, bu the budget discussions. Uh, and again, also on March 21st. Um, okay, item 60, 2011, uh, is an executive session request. We have a re recommendation that we go into executive se session to review the status of negotiations with the Cape Elizabeth Police Benevolent Association and to discuss land acquisition slash disposition issues. So moved. Okay. Second. Okay, any discussion? All those in, oh, Mike. The state law provides you to cite the statute. No, thank you. Uh, so Jim, is it fair to say that you made your motion in conformance with one MRSA section 405, six C and D? Yes. Okay, with that qualification, did the seconder Yes. Accept that? Okay. All those in favor of the motion? Okay. We're going to executive session. Thank you.